Okay, well, right here in Edmonton, as of July 2nd, Alberta Environment has authorized EPCOR to lower fluoride levels from 0.8 parts per million to 0.7 parts per million. We're ready, we're ready to make adjustments. We've looked at our process. Uh, we can readily make those adjustments. The move comes after a Health Canada panel made the decision to lower the optimum level in the water, citing the increased prevalence of fluoride in toothpaste and mouthwash. That's a recommended dosage level. Uh, they're still going to stick with the, the maximum allowable concentration of 1.5. That is, you never to exceed 1.5 uh, in the water at any time. Edmonton gets its fluoride in the form of hexofluorcylic acid. That's derived from the fertilizer industry, uh, derived from phosphates. Well, now here, let's talk about this. Once again, Dr. Simi Soin, City Centre Dental, Colin McGarrigal, editor of Avenue Magazine, Miles Kitagawa from Toxic Watch Society of Alberta. Welcome to the show, gang. We're going to start you. off. Uh, Colin, I'm interested uh, to ask you in the, the most current, most recent issue of uh, Avenue Edmonton, you and your team looked into the fluoride issue. What prompted the look inward? Well, I think uh, what we noticed is that Edmonton's actually in the minority. 60% of Canadians don't receive fluoride in their water. And not only that, there's a movement around uh, Alberta uh, to start looking at removing it. Uh, Hannah's taken it out of the water, Drayton Valley have taken it out of the water. Calgary almost did a few weeks ago, to, uh, it only lost by one vote. And really what we wanted to know is, is why hasn't Edmonton looked at this issue since 1966? We're talking 45 years ago, there was a lot of different science back then than there is today. And we're wondering, you know, maybe it's time to look into this debate again because it seems like everybody else is and I think uh, it's not prudent of our city council to not start to look into this issue. Miles, in the story that we just saw there uh, by Amanda Ferguson, we saw one woman taking issue with the fluoride infusion into her water in Red Deer by saying, I'm being medicated without my permission. Where do you take issue with fluoride? Um, we, we believe that this is really, uh, it's a redundant practice in, in modern developed countries because we're, we're really paying for essentially the same, uh, the same medical treatment three times. We pay when we go to the dentist, we pay when we buy our fluoridated toothpaste, and we're paying for this was probably a much less effective, definitely redundant um, medication when, we, when uh, we as citizens have to pay for it in our water. Okay, well, well and we're gonna go right to the person who stares at people's teeth all That's day right. long, Dr. Simi Soin. Uh, what have you found when it comes to fluoride? Is it redundant? I, I don't think so. I think we have to keep in mind that this is a public health measure. And when we're putting fluoride in the water, what we're trying to do is expand that benefit to people quite often who may not be seeing the dentist every year, who may not be um, have it brushing twice a day like it's recommended. The water fluoridation levels we're talking about are, are healthy. Um, fluorosis is something that has come up. I think we've been proactive in, in sort of looking at that and saying, okay, if we're starting to see that there is other sources that people are getting more exposed to, now is a good time to maybe look at our water and see if we really need that much in our water anymore. So I think we've responded by taking it down to 0.7 parts per million, which is, as Health Canada has said, a very healthy number, and I support it. Okay, well, yeah. we'll call these the opening arguments. When we come back, we're going to look more in depth. Fluoride in Edmonton's water, does it belong? All right, the question, fluoride too much of a good thing or is it a good thing at all? That's what we're talking about. Dr. Simi Soin, City Centre Dental, Colin McGarrigal, Avenue Magazine, Miles Kitagawa, Toxic Watch Society of Alberta. Uh, Colin, in the most uh, current issue of Avenue Magazine, you look into the issue in depth in partnership here with City TV. One thing that struck me was where fluoride comes from in the first place. Well, it, what people think, you know, when you go to dentists, you get sodium fluoride, and that's a very high grade of fluoride. In, in the water here, it's hydrofluorosilicic acid, and, and like I say, it's a byproduct of, of the fertilizer industry, and some people consider it toxic waste, but I think for a lot of people, too, you're talking about the ethics of mass medicating an entire population, so people are having to take this fluoride without any choice. So it's very ethical, you know, gray area around here, and I think, you know, when, when 45 years ago people looked at it, I think the people of today uh, you know, need to have a say, and it would be very easy for City Council to look at this again, and if they wanted to go by route of referendum, they could easily add it on to next year's civic election, so I think it's prudent of City Council to look at this issue, at least. You know, we've had a couple emails of viewers telling us that they'd like to see it in either a plebiscite or, or included in some way in debate, what have you, in the next civic election. Uh, Dr. Swain, we do know that Health Canada has given the green light to fluoridation, of course. It it's has, been yeah. in, in Edmonton's water for more than 40 years. In your practice, you're telling us that you see the health benefits of it. Where do you see it most? Well, I definitely see it when I compare 
some, I, I'm in a practice that's been established for the last, you know, 18 years, and so we have patients from grandparents to children, and I have patients who are in the elderly generation who have virtually every tooth restored and or many tooth missing, and then I'm privileged to see these children who are coming into my clinic who have no cavities. They get the no cavity go ahead, and so I definitely think would the fluoride in the water. Would you attribute that directly to fluoride? I, I do think that plays a huge role in that. That in dental education is is very important, but definitely I think fluoridation plays a role. I think, I think that we, we definitely agree that the improvements in topical treatment for dental health have, have improved dramatically over the years of spanning the grandparents that you're seeing and the children that you're seeing. Um, what, we, what I think we need to be looking at is um, some of the non-dental concerns that are being raised with the practice of this uncontrolled water fluoridation. Because there's, like you mentioned, that Health Canada takes a weight of evidence approach when it's coming up with these things. Uh, coming up with these recommendations. So even though there's tantalizing evidence that things like bone health, um, asso associations with cancer, associations with developmental um, problems, these are, these are things that they haven't met the threshold for, for the weight of evidence proof, but they are intriguing clues about um, what the health, health concerns with fluoridation would be. Okay, I'm gonna call, actually, we just had a graphic up. I'd like to have that graphic up one more time because it really jumped out at me. It shows the numbers in tooth decay in 12-year-olds. And basically what it shows, as you'll see here in different countries, comparing countries that do add fluoride to countries that don't, and with minor exceptions, all of the numbers are dropping. Dr. Swain, does that hurt the science that suggests that fluoride is to be credited for increasing dental health in children, or do you think there's other factors? Well, I think we got to look at that real carefully because we have to remember that fluoridation means the addition of water to our, the addition of fluoride to our water supply. And some countries do have naturally higher levels of fluoride. So when we're looking at the cross spectrum there, we need to be sure that we're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Okay, I want to give you all a chance to have one last word. You've each got 20 seconds. Take it away, Miles. The wisest thing that we should be doing is. Um, taking a precautionary approach. If it's controversial and it's not an essential service, if there are perfectly, perfectly uh, effective um, alternatives, we should, we should wait for the research, we should stop the practice, and um, keep doing what we're doing is protect our health through topical dental treatment. Cool. Well, I think it would be prudent of our city council to start to look into this issue a little bit. I think to just put the blinders on and, and uh, you know, accept Health Canada's recommendations uh, uh, isn't wise. And I think especially when other communities are looking at it and it's proven basically that communities that don't have fluoride uh, don't have any more dental carriers than we do. So I think it's time we start to look into this. Okay, Dr. Swain. Well, I think that there's no harm in looking at it again. I do think the evidence to date, that when it's looked at in its entirety, supports water fluoridation and obviously also does not support some of these other health concerns that have been um, brought to the public without real heavy evidence to support it. But, I mean, we can definitely keep looking at it. We can definitely keep talking about it. I think that's great. I think it's an issue that's been controversial from the beginning, and discussion and further investigation would not hurt. Well said. I've just been told in my ear that I have 30 more seconds, so I'm going to break convention here and ask Colin uh, to break a cardinal rule. We know where you stand on this, Miles. We know where you stand on this, Dr. Swain. Colin, after the research, after putting out the, the latest issue of Avenue, has this affected or changed the way that you view whether or not you want fluoride in your children's drinking water? Well, even Health Canada recommends that children under two uh, don't drink fluoridated water, and um, I don't give it to my kids. You don't? No. Okay. Well, hey, we heard that from Mayor Morris from Welling in Red Deer. He says, if you don't like it in your water, find your drinking water elsewhere and use our water supply for laundry, watering your lawn, and everything else. Miles Kitagawa, Toxic Watch Society of Alberta, uh, Colin McGarrigal, Avenue Magazine. Be sure to check it out. And Dr. Simi Swain from City Centre Dental. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you, Ryan. No doubt this issue will rage on. We do know the change is already implemented here in Edmonton. 0 0.8 to 0 0.7 parts per million fluoride added. If you would like to weigh in, send us an email at breakfasttelevision.ca or contact your ward city councillor. Bridget Ryan having one heck load of fun at the track. We're going to check back in with her after this break. Mm -hmm.